Ah, what could be nicer than working by candlelight? Electronic candlelight, obviously. Let's turn the light on and take a look at these candles. Two electronic candles. An expensive one, made by a company, well, made under the brand name Illuminara. And a cheap copy, made by Premier, which is the generic brand. But both operating on a similar, similar principle. Um, but let's uh, get this one out of the way, because this video is about the expensive one. So I'm just going to turn this other one off. Now, this one has a remote control that can be used to turn the um, candle off, on and set timer mode. Alternatively, there are buttons in the bottom that can be used to turn it off and on. So let's uh, investigate this a bit further. The battery holder doesn't have any obvious screws to it, but there's a wee pin pushes in here, which is quite a clever arrangement, and then the base comes off to reveal two D-cell batteries. These ones that they've supplied are not alkaline, these are uh, super heavy duty um, zinc chloride, which is a bit tacky, but not to worry. Um, I like the, the battery holder, the battery clip, because it's a little pin that pushes down, and by pushing uh, a pointy object into this to push that pin down, and then sliding this back, it unlocks it. It's quite neat. I've never seen a ranger quite like that. So let's uh, undo the screws in the bottom. Two screws. Uh, stainless steel screws, at which point I should mention that this candle has one rather distinctive feature. It's a newer version of the Luminara candle and it's waterproof. It's designed to actually be used outdoors, which is a really nice thing. I like that a lot. So here we go. Here's what's inside. A clear housing around the battery holder and the electronics um, and the flame assembly at the top which unplugs from a mounting that in itself seems to just clip in does that just clip in? I think, it, yes it does, it just clips in now this is the middle height of the candle so I'm guessing that maybe um, different sizes have different packers uh, but they all have the same base unit and the same module at the top so this doesn't really need to be out does it? So I'm just going to pop this back in oh that snaps in quite nicely uh, the flame module itself it consists of a plastic flame on a little support wire with a slight bend down in it so it always goes back to a central position and that lets it not just swing side to side but actually backwards backwards and forwards and twist as well which uh, it's a very good idea it's, it works very well this being waterproof I see the LED that points up at the at the flame because the flame is lit from the front with an LED um, it's all sealed round at the base with what looks like epoxy resin, I'm not 100% sure if that's epoxy or hot melt uh, to make it uh, as watertight as they could probably get it and they've also sleeved the wires, it's quite neat that uh, bit looks as though it may unclip yep, it's very modular so that part of it unclips And that just really reveals underneath it's got the small counterbalance and a little neodymium iron boron magnet. I'm guessing it's neodymium iron boron because it's quite powerful. This is the deflection module and I can already see there's a wee coil off uh, centre here. But that's probably to make sure it's roughly centred under the, the magnet. Now let's uh, take this out. This uh, has wires going through and it's also been sealed with uh, glue. So let's unscrew this. Oh, 
all stainless steel non-magnetic screws again. That's presumably for the water resistance. Inside is a little circuit board sitting down. It's heat staked, I think, onto uh, mounts. And the circuit board doesn't have the coil mounted directly on it. The coil is mounted on top of a little plastic um, arrangement, a little plastic pillar. And the circuit board seems to be just purely um, a sort of strain relief for the wires. It's a sort of just a basically terminal uh, board, which is reasonable enough. The, there's a waterproof O-ring here, a silicon O-ring, which is good. Oh, and uh, one of the pillars has a little indent on it, a little key, so that you can only put it the right way around. Uh, that's quite neat. Liking it so far. I have to say, between the cheap copy and the original Luminara, the original Luminara has a better flame movement. It's much more subtle. The copy, the Premier candle, tends to thrash the flame backwards and forwards, allowed clicking noises. Um, also, the Luminara here uses a rich, warm white LED, but it's not just standard warm white, it's a very sort of firelight warm white. It's, it's lovely, it actually really suits the sort of candle application. It looks more like an actual candle flame than the Premier's uh, does, because the Premier candle uses a warm white LED, what I'd call a generic warm white LED, you get what colour we give you. And it's a strange, washed-out, pinky white, which doesn't look that nice. So, that's uh, screwed back together. And I'm guessing... This will just click back in. Yep. Nice, I like that. Um, I'll just put this back on... Here, I think, and ag again it's keyed, so everything just automatically by default goes to the correct position. This is nice. I'm trying to work out what this little plastic bit here. Oh, I see what it is. Oh, that's quite neat. If this is what I think it is, it's very neat. Yep. It's a little drip trap, it's to stop water flowing back down into the electronics here. The cables are brought down and it's a sort of almost like a U-bend. It goes up inside this cover and down so that water from above can't actually go down in here. That's very nice, I like that. That's a clever bit of design. Stainless steel screw again. Slightly annoying because it doesn't stick to my screwdriver but it um, means it's not going to corrode inside the light which is nice. the screws and that. I don't think I need to take this out. This looks like the spring-loaded pin mechanism for the battery holder. So I shall unscrew the battery housing. To get to the electronics and see if there's anything really interesting there. The quota battery life runtime of 500 hours, which is quite impressive, but then again, bear in mind it is to um, D cells, and if you're using alkaline cells, they should last for ages. Um, it runs, it's got a timer facility whereby at the point you turn it on, it'll run for 5 hours and then turn off for 19 hours, and then after the 19 hours has elapsed, it'll turn on again. And what this means is if you turn it on at maybe about 6 pm every at night time, then it'll automatically turn itself off at 11, uh, five hours later, and then the following day it'll turn back on at 6 again, so it just basically cycles itself on and off, which is a nice idea too. Don't want to break any of these wires. Okay, looks alright. Um, the circuit board, I see a connector here, which is quite interesting, onto the the switchboard. 
And the circuit board seems to be held in place. There's the infrared sensor for the um, remote control. There's an inductor, which I'm guessing is a step up for the LED to step the three volts up to a voltage that as the voltage goes down the batteries it can keep the LED lit. Uh, there's a crystal which looks like it's a 4 megahertz crystal. So I'm guessing there's a wee processor on the back of this. Let's um, take this off. We're in the waterproof section now which is possibly why these ones are just ordinary steel, these outer screws. I'm guessing this cap just holds the circuit board in. Oh, that's interesting. The battery connection springs are actually held in place by that plate. They just poke through like that. Yeah, that's quite neat. And they've got a square recess to hold them in alignment. That's quite, uh, that's quite a smart arrangement. Oh, the circuit board does just unplug. So what's on this circuit board down here? It's just the two buttons with a little waterproof cover over them. One bu button is uh, power on, power off, and the other one is timed in normal mode. Or you can use the remote control. But that's it, just two switches on that. I'm guessing that um, the negative is going down to this from the battery connection, so it'll probably come up in a pin. The positive may go through a switch, or I'm not sure if the positive or the negative is switched. And then the time, the switch will turn the power on completely, the on-off switch, and the other switch, the one that sets between the timer mode and uh, normal mode, is probably just going to pull maybe, say, the middle pin or a, a side pin to um, uh, either the positive or the negative. OK, that's interesting. The circuit board, rather predictably, has a chip on board on it, a cob. It's got a couple of small transistors down here. Now, at least one of those will be used probably for deflecting the coil. The red and black wire are going to the LED, so they're coming from the vicinity of the choke, which is kind of predictable. And that connection, the choke, also goes to this big chunky transistor here, so I'm guessing this transistor is probably... Um, oh, not 100% sure actually. I think that transistor is probably the one that's driving the choke for the step-up circuit for the LED. Although, On the back of it, this doesn't mean the connections are actually... Oh, let's see, I, um, that one's good down there. I'm not, not sure if that transistor is doing the pulse in the coil or driving the, the little step-up circuit. The step-up circuit does seem to go there, so I'm guessing that probably is the what's driving the uh, LED. And uh, it's probably these transistors down here are driving the coil, but I'm not sure why there are two. It's not really obvious. Maybe one of them's just got some other function. I'm not really sure. But um, apart from that, I mean, it's obviously they've got a custom program microcontroller under this little blob of resin. Um, and apart from that, it's just a few support components. Um, so overall, this is a really nice design. It's, it's certainly it's one of the nicest um, actions. The it's got the nicest action. It's got the nicest color, and it's got the nicest reflector. So um, yeah, I, I quite like that. I mean, it's an expensive candle, the Luminara candle. Um, in the UK, this one cost about thirty pounds, which I'm guessing well, usually when you go to America, it just translates to thirty dollars. But um, it makes it a fairly expensive-ish sort of uh, electronic candle, but having said that, its quality of construction and its design seems to be really good. So, um, 
It's actually, it's actually, I suppose really it's worth that. It's certainly a lot better than the Premier candle, which uh, is just, it's taken all these good design features and um, the Premier candle is not, just not anywhere near remotely as uh, refined as this one. But the Premier candle costs £10, which is a third of the price. So um, I'm sure maybe the price of these will come down in the future to make them more affordable to more people. But um, other than that, I, s I have to say the quality of it is very, very good. So um, that's, that's really quite a nice uh, candle.